What is up, everybody? And welcome back to Zachary Reality. It is Zachary Reality, and we are live today on a Tuesday for a very exciting interview with Julia Christine. Julia is a former VIP cocktail server, and she is revealing what it is really like to be a bottle server for the in her elite tell-all memoir, Just the Tip, a memoir of a Las Vegas bottle server. Her stories showcase the glitz and glamour of this high-rolling lifestyle, but intertwines them with the tales of blackmail and murder, overdoses and sexual favors, and all the things they do to just get that extra tip. Julia, how are you doing today? Thank you for that amazing introduction and actually all true. That's in the book. It's pretty crazy, but yes, thank you. I'm great. <laughs> I'm so great that you're great. Um, here is a cover of the book for those tuning in live watching on YouTube. It is so fabulous. I love this cover. Um, how did you put this cover together? So when I first started off as a bottle server out in Las Vegas, I worked for the day club. I worked for a party called rehab, which no longer exists, unfortunately, but it was the first a uh, pool party um, in Las Vegas, actually in the whole country. So we wore bikinis for our um, uniforms and I didn't want to be too revealing mm -hmm. <laughs> as a cover, but I, you know, so I decided just to wear a one piece, but it, that's, that's how I got started. That's just basically a, you know, a type of uniform that we wore as bottle servers. How long were you a bottle server for? So in Las Vegas, I was a bottle server for around six years and then I had moved to New York City and I was a nightclub bottle server in New York City for four years. Wow and are you done yeah. doing bottle serving now or are you still doing it? No I'm, I'm done um there's lots of girl I yeah I definitely had to retire my swimsuit and my you know lingerie nightclub outfit <laughs> dress <laughs> I'm a little old now so I guess you can call me an OG of it but um in a way I'm kind of glad that I retired because uh, a lot of my non-disclosure agreements that I had to sign while working in Las Vegas uh, I had to wait for them to expire before I could actually write my book too so yeah. oh, okay well that makes <laughs> sense is it kind of like a professional athlete retiring from their career in football or whatever like is that how it felt for you yeah, because I still miss it. I mean, obviously, I it's a really fun job, uh, even with all the bad things that did happen and stuff. Um, I would never take anything, anything back. Like I would, I would, if I could stay young forever and work that job mm -hmm. forever, I would. You meet so many cool people. You make a lot of money and tips, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just a yeah, a great experience. So it is, it is, it is definitely a new change of pace that I'm gonna, you know, I'm doing now and stuff. But I'm excited for the future. For sure. It's like the weekend. It's like you never want it to end. But then it comes up to Monday and you're like, oh, here we go again. It's, it's Yeah, you're like, like, should I do it again next weekend or should I go to church? <laughs> <laughs> and then you end up like partying again and doing exactly. it. Exactly. But were you like partying a lot on the job or were you just truly working? Like, where is that kind of balance? And how do you kind of cohabitate with your coworkers if they're, you know, if they're partying and you're not? Yeah. So you do become a little bit of an alcoholic. I, I'm not going to lie, uh, doing bottle service. You, not that you're forced into it, but you kind of want the clients and stuff, your customers to drink more. So they'll buy more alcohol. And, you know, when I first started, I was working at the pool and it was really hot. So we were actually told, do not drink with your clients unless you can fake it. Like I would pour myself like shots and throw it over my shoulder or drink water. But then when I got into the nightclub bottle service, I was drinking a lot more and stuff with them. And uh, yeah, my liver, my liver definitely took some damage and stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> it is part of the job. But, um, you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, go with the flow and, and, and work your magic. <laughs> Where do you think like the top three best like hotels are for pool parties in Vegas? Well, when I was there, I worked at rehab. So rehab is no longer in existence because the Hard Rock Hotel um, was sold. And now it's, um, I think, Virgin Hotels. But uh, obviously, Tao and Tao Group, they own Marquee and they own Lava. Those are still very, very big names in the nightclub industry for Vegas and New York City. And um, an excess nightclub is still in the top. And I actually opened excess nightclub. I was one of the one of the first cocktail servers to work there. And it's wow. still doing very well. And actually some of the girls who opened with me, which I think that was what, like maybe 12 years ago now, 15 years ago. Wow. Crazy times. But um, yeah, they, they still work there too. <laughs> okay. What are you doing for work now? And where do you live? Well, 
I moved to New York City and I started doing real estate as well as doing bottle service at night. Um, and I was doing that for several years. And then, um, unfortunately, my mom had passed away when, with COVID, um, from the whole oh, COVID. I'm sorry. I, uh, it's very sad. Uh, a couple of years ago. And so when she passed away, I decided to um, take this time to really, because um, she's the one who really inspired me to write my book and keep a journal the whole time I was in Las Vegas. So I kept the journal. And then, you know, when she passed, I was like, you know what, I'm really going to just do this for her. And so mm-hmm. um, I left New York City and came back down to Virginia because that's where I'm Ooh. born and raised. Yeah, Virginia, Southern girl. <laughs> and so I came back down here to spend more time with my family and really focus on my book. So I've been here for the past two years. That's amazing. And yeah. is the I'm sure this book is like the full-time job right now, just like getting it out there, getting it sold yes. and, you know, seeing what could come from it because it's such a unique idea and I hope that it's very successful. So mm-hmm. um, why do people need to buy the book? Well, because I feel like the bottle service industry has really taken off the past few years. And I feel like that whole um, that whole lifestyle of the nightclub industry and how people get jobs working in it is so, uh, you know, is so like in demand right now. People really want to know. And I, I'm not going to lie. I am a little surprised that no one's actually written a book before. I mean, in my in my situation, I had to wait for obviously a lot of uh non-disclosure agreements to pass those mm-hmm. some of them were like up to five years yeah. um and then finally had the courage to write the book myself but um but yeah i feel like there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people aren't really familiar with um overdoses you know within the staff sec- a lot of sexual harassment um mm-hmm. a lot of unfortunately in my job i've seen people die and stuff which is really the dark side of the bottle service but also mm-hmm. you know never judge a book by its cover. I know I'm in a bathing suit, but there's a lot more to the cocktail servers and the bottle servers than than Mm. meets the eye. Like a lot of people think we're just bimbos, but most of us go to college or are college graduates and we just really want to make that extra tip, you know? So. (laughs) I mean, it's kind of a job where you can put as much work into it and you'll get as much reward. If you're there busting your ass every single night, I'm sure you could work seven nights a week if you ask your or is there ever like a limit to the bosses say like, no, you, you can't work. It's illegal to work this many hours or you just kind of work whenever you want. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, uh, you have to work a, a minimum amount of shifts. Now, if you want to pick up overtime, they, they usually have no problem with that. So yeah, you can make, you can make at least like 10 grand a week if you really wanted to hustle. Mm-hmm. You got to have a lot of stamina and a lot of strength and you have to have people skills. You have to know how to talk to oh, people yeah. and how to sell drinks and what was kind of your way to get someone to buy a shot or buy a drink? Like, how did you kind of lure people in? Um, <laughs> well, I have two ways. One is uh, the first year I was a bottle server at rehab, we actually did a reality TV show. Mm-hmm. And I was one of the cast members on the TV show. It was called Rehab Party at the Hard Rock Hotel. And it was actually very successful. And the Hard Rock was actually sued by Hard Rock International to get the show offline because it showed so much debauchery and and craziness Mm. and they didn't want that to be affiliated with the Hard Rock. But it was a very popular TV show and I was on it for two seasons. And so one of the ways that I got people to buy the the massive, you know, nine liters, 12 liters of champagne or or even give me an extra tip is I would use my camera crew. I would Mm. have them go in and so I would almost like guilt trip people and then nobody a wanted to be a cheap tipper on national television. So even though the bills were never shown, they didn't know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would have my camera crew zoom in on the bill as they were leaving the tip. And then I'm like, oh, 30 percent. So generous of you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Where <laughs> or you got to buy that big bottle of champagne, you know, make yeah. yourself like, you know, king of the castle here in Vegas. So, yeah. Where can people That's, find that was my little trick? Um, well, it was on True TV. I don't even think it's allowed to be aired. It's like a banned reality show now because the Hard Rock had, um, you know, forbidden it to be aired anymore. So you can, I, there's still episodes on YouTube. Um, you can find it all over YouTube still. Do you still keep in touch with a lot of the castmates? My managers, I do. Um, the bartenders and the other cocktail server who was part of the, uh, the cast with me. Uh, no, I don't. We all kind of went our separate ways. And, uh, you know, obviously the first while we were filming, we were all very close. And then, you know, as we just got older and we all started venturing out to other nightclubs or other parts of life or got married or whatever. But I still keep in contact with some of my managers. So that's that's kind of nice. <laughs> that's cool. What was the what was the show kind of like? Was it just showing the ins and outs of the bottle service industry 
And would it also be drama between different cast members and hookups? Yeah, you know, not really drama between us, us cast members because it was actually a unique show uh, and the fact that we, they never did a casting call for the show. We were actually hired already as employees. We already did our casting call to become bottle servers, become b bartenders uh, and beat out like hundreds of other women to get this, these positions. And then I remember our first day of training, our managers and the CEO came up and said, hey, by the way, everybody, we're gonna be filming a reality show. And so instead of us doing a casting call and having you know actors or other people come in to apply for the TV show, we're gonna use you guys. And so all of us actually already got along. And so the show was about just showing how crazy you know Vegas was. And it was, um, it got pretty, got pretty wild. There were some things that were definitely not aired on show that that I actually put in my book to um, inform people mm -hmm. of how how crazy and how outrageous it got. Um, one of the stories was, and my, one of the chapters of my book is about um, the pool part. That what was in the pool. <laughs> oh my god! I'll just leave it that. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's so you're going to talk a lot. Trust me, you might not want to go swimming in Vegas again after hearing this. <laughs> oh god! So you're going to talk a lot about the um, the show in the in your book uh there's like two chapters uh dedicated to the show in my book um just because i didn't want it to really focus on the show everybody kind of saw the show already many years ago and i just wanted to, to focus on more of like what really goes on in vegas besides be me being on a reality show you know i also talked about me when i got hired at access and how it was um it was very, it was very difficult. I mean, we made a ton of money, but at the same time, we were told every day, like we're replaceable. We were made to feel like we're nothing, even though every single girl is, is dropped out gorgeous working there, but they really, they really down your self-esteem working there. Um, and then of course you have management, certain managers or owners who would um, want to take advantage of girls and situations and say, Hey, I'll give you the bigger, the better table where you'll make more money, VIP table, and you'll make mm -hmm. way more money, but you got to to extracurricular activities on oh, the side. No. And for me, this is, a, yeah. And I actually was put in that situation and uh, this is specifically with excess nightclub. And when I um, basically said no, or, you know, ran away, literally ran away from the situation. Uh, the following week I was reprimanded and fired from my job. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so this book is truly like telling your whole story and it's going to be great to also help other women who are in the same situation and don't know how to say no or don't know how to set boundaries. So what advice would you give to your younger self and to women who are just starting to get into the bottle service industry, especially in Vegas? Um, for my younger self or anybody who's interested to become a bottle server, you know, you just have to have really tough skin and just be yourself. And if anybody tries to cross a line with you, whether if it's a client or um, or a manager, just know your rights. And if you do get reprimanded, just know that there's all there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. That position actually opened up other doors for me. So because it didn't work out there, I was actually hired with Tao Group and I was a Tao Group for several years and they were one of the best companies I worked for. And I met so many cool people that I'm still really great friends with to this day. And I was able to move to New York City because of them and stuff. So, you know, um, don't let other people like, basically don't let other people, you know, force you into something that you don't wanna do. And on the flip side, if you do choose to do things, for that extra tip, then guess what? That's your power and that's your right to do. No one can judge you for it because it's your choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great, that's really Which I also advice. have that in the book too. That's really great advice. Oh my God, I love that. I'm so excited to read it and, you know, he, just read all of it. I think it just seems so intriguing and I can't wait to hear more about your journey and your story. Um, is there anything else to do in Vegas okay. besides partying, besides nightclubs, besides swimming in the pool? What else is there to do in mm -hmm. Vegas and the surrounding areas? <laughs> I mean, well, now we have so many festivals that happen there. And, you know, I actually loved living in Las Vegas. If it wasn't for me getting older, because I actually started bottle service when I was 30. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I've already reached my prime, I thought, when I first started. But um, I would have still loved to live in Las Vegas and work in the industry. But um, you could, there's so much to do there. There's so much nature, there's lakes you can go on to. 
Uh, it's a lot of big communities like um, like Summerlin and Henderson, where you everybody's just very much into their communities. Uh, there's the Valley of Fire, which is one of my favorite places to go hiking. You can go snowboarding, actually. Mm. There's lots of things to do there. Plus, if you get a little, you know, urge, you can just drive a few hours and go to California. Yeah. Or actually, Area 51, too. It's actually near Las Vegas. A lot of people don't know that if you're in the oh. aliens. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been I'm, to super, the, um, I'm really into aliens. I'm a huge geek like that. So. Oh, cool. I've been to the Seven Magic Mountains. Have you ever been to those? No, actually, I, I haven't. No. Is that around Las Vegas? Yeah, it's right outside of Vegas. And there are these big rocks. They're painted different neon colors, like blue and green and yellow. And it's like a huge like type of park where people take pictures. Oh my gosh, how did I not know that? I need a, man, I need to figure out some things since I'll actually <laughs> be back in Vegas in a couple of weeks doing a book signing. So I'll definitely, you know, look look into that for sure. Yeah, you have to. I mean, I know because I drive from LA, so I, it's something I always pass. So I can't miss it because I see it on the side of the highway. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you haven't made the drive to LA from Vegas, you might you might have missed it. Is it like the XYZ exit? You know that exit? It's like XYZX or something. And <laughs> Yeah, I, I always wonder. Fun. I always wanted to take that road and see where it goes. So <laughs> yeah, you got to just take roads. So when you go back to Vegas to promote the book and to go to some book signings, where can everybody find you? And what is your agenda for the weekend? This weekend or my this weekend? Just do yard work. I'm just kidding. No, um, I love gardening. No, but when I go to <laughs> when I go to Vegas to do my book signings, it's actually going to be on a Saturday, and then I'm just going to meet up with a bunch of friends. We're going to go out to dinners. I probably won't do the nightclub thing because you know it's a little weird now. Now I go to bed at like midnight at the latest, and mm -hmm. back in the day I would go to bed as the sun was rising. It's pretty crazy how times have changed, but. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll be there at Barnes and Noble doing a book signing and um, I'll have everything linked on my Instagram if anybody wants to um, wants to look into that or come say hi to me while I'm there, uh, have the exact date and location. And other than that, if anybody wants to get my book, it's on bookbaby.com or you can purchase it on Barnes and Noble or Amazon as well. I love it. Um, before I let you go, um, what, are, what are your favorite reality shows? What are you watching right now? I always like to ask my guests. Well, I really was into the Golden Bachelor. I'm like, mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, because I still believe in true love, even though I'm single. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then, you know, now they're separated. So I'm pretty bummed out about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, but what, besides do think, the, yeah, besides, huh? what did you think about that separation? How do you who do you think broke up with who? Oh, I definitely think she broke up with him. And I think that he did something. I mean, I'm not gonna say he cheated or nothing like that. Because he's he's an older gentleman now. I mean, who knows, but I definitely think there's more to the story, unfortunately. But um, I feel like she is definitely a very sweet lady. That's what she comes across, but doesn't put up with any crap either. So I feel like she might have figured something out and mm. it didn't work out. But um, yeah, I just, you know, The Golden Bachelor was my favorite for a little while. And um, I'm not going to lie. I do love that Love is Blind show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's a really good one. Um, Celeste is tuning in live and she says, Julia, will you tune into Jen's season? Oh, um, good question. You know what? Um, yeah, I actually like The Bachelorettes. I'm not really a fan of The Bachelor just because, you know, I, I feel like all those women are so beautiful and just competing for one guy. We already do that naturally anyways. So mm. yeah. it's kind of a bummer, but Bachelorette, yeah, I'll probably be tuning in for her. Yeah, for sure. That's a hot She's take. She's the first Asian American too, right? Yeah, she is. That's a really hot take. Oh, good for her. And she's, I think she's a nurse, so she's pretty successful in her own right. Yeah, good for her. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again so much for coming on and sharing your story. Everybody go check out the book. I have Julia's Instagram linked in the description below. So you guys can go follow her and get all the updates. And thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Zachary, for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. And thank you all so Bye. much for tuning in, listening and watching. Give this video a thumbs up, comment down below your thoughts, and we will see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye, guys.